Good morning, everybody. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and today we're going to do something new. Today, I am going to build what is called a, um, a drop spine album box. So, <clears throat> actually, it's more like an explosion box. So when you open it up, um, the sides are going to fall away. And when you close it completely, it looks very much like a box. And this box is going to be uh, eight and a half by six and a half by three and a half. So it's gonna be a six pocket page album. <clears throat> we'll start with giving you the chipboard measurements. So you're going to need a piece of chipboard that's eight and a half by six and a half. You're gonna need two pieces of chipboard that are three and a half by six and a half to go on either end. And then you're gonna need two long pieces which are three and a half by eight and a half that are gonna go on the sides like this. So this is gonna be the side. <clears throat> and then these will drop away. This will have the page hinges on it. And then we'll build the rest of this um, after we get this covered. Because it's going to cover so much space on the desk, I'm going to start by um, just doing this base part. So I've trimmed out my papers. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the side pieces first. So we'll set aside the base. And we're going to cover these side pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, score and fold over the edges just like we do on a regular album but we're not going to adhere this this bottom piece and that's how we're going to I want to make sure that I'm in frame so we're gonna uh, fold over and adhere three of the four sides the fourth side is going to be left open to attach to the base and then I've not done this before so in an abundance of caution I have blackened my corners just in case a little bit of my corner shows on the inside. I don't know if it will when I'm finished, but um, I'd hate to have just a little piece of chipboard peeking out. My goal is to not have any chipboard peeking out, but uh, my concern is where it's attaching to this base. <clears throat> Once I fold it over, I, I just wanna make sure that that's covered. Now I do plan to put a piece uh, on top this way, but I don't want it to interfere with the free flow of the flap when I pull the lid off. So that's where I'm headed. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna use tape to adhere this. Um, and I'm just gonna use white tape so it goes pretty quickly. And I just trimmed this out roughly to have a one inch um, excess, which just makes it easy for me to fold over. You don't have to do one inch. If you wanna do a half inch, that's fine. I just find it's easier for me to, to work with one inch. And a lot of stuff that I normally breeze through because we've built so many base albums, I'm not going to. I'm going to go through every single step, including you know where I'm putting tape on the chipboard pieces. Sometimes it's our, I do it ahead of time, um, and I may take a break and cover the rest in tape, but we'll see. Okay, you can add more tape if you want than this, but I think this will be sufficient. I'll burnish this all in place. And then I'm gonna use the benefit of my grid and So my goal is to come down one inch and across an inch, so I'm, gonna, I'm looking for that spot. And again, we're folding this over, so it's not real important, just as long as you've got enough um, paper to come across the back. Okay, so again, I'm looking to come down an inch and over an inch. That looks pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna miter all four corners. I'll 
use my big scissors. And I'm gonna cut on the outside of that line just to be cautious. It's easier to trim more away later. And like I said, I don't have any experience with these boxes, so you guys are going through the learning process with me. all the sides and then we'll put our adder tape. Okay. I'm going to use my 3 8 I think that's sufficient. By the way, I just used um, Sharpie to blacken my corners. Like I said, I hope I, I don't, I really don't know what to expect and I hope that nothing's gonna show, but we're gonna find that out together and then come up with solutions if it does, okay? <clears throat> I've seen other people do these albums and I've seen people some of the ones that I've seen, they don't bother to cover the edge of the chipboard, and I just, I think that would bother me. Um, everybody's different, but I think that would be a problematic for me. <laughs> I think it's the one thing I would see every time I open my book. Okay, so remember, we're gonna do three out of the four sides. On this side, we're gonna leave the, tack, the tape intact because it's actually gonna to attach to the bottom of the, or the back of the album cover. Okay, I like to, I don't know if there's any logic behind this, but I prefer to do the long edge first and then come back and do my shorter sides. I'm using 65 pound paper. This is Astro Brights, 65 pounds Astro Brights. And I think that when I had done some mocking up, I think uh, 65 pound is the right answer. I think um, 80 pound might be too heavy uh, to get your um, explosion parts to fall freely. So something to consider. I'm gonna make sure that I tuck this in really, really well. So I'm using my spatula tool instead of my fingernails just to make sure that it's going down the side of the chipboard. And I'll show you real quick. So that's what it looks like before, and this is what we want it to look like after. And hopefully, hopefully you can see that. It's very difficult black on black, but I'm pushing it straight down the edge of the chipboard. And I'm doing it carefully so it doesn't tear. So I'm pushing a little bit at a time so that it's kind of coming in from the outside edges to fill that gap. Then I want it nice and snug, okay? There we go. So we can go ahead and fold these over now. Okay, and I 
think I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tape. I've got this quarter inch tape right here on the sides. I should have done it up here, but I didn't. So I would recommend going ahead and taping this edge too. Would have been easier to do before I took my backing off, but wrong tool. Okay. Let's fold this over. Okay, I am gonna take a break. I'm gonna tape everything else up and probably go ahead and wrap the sides and then you're gonna see the result. Because I don't think we need to go through this process for three more um, panels. You get the gist. So, so this is the long side, and again, this is where we're going to attach it to this panel, like so. And then I'm gonna put um, a black one inch hinge uh, to cover the space um, on either side, so that all we have to do is mat these because they'll have a nice black frame, okay? So there's two methods. There's this one where I put that flange underneath, which is what I'm planning on doing. The other one would be to put the flange on top. But if you put it on top, then when the side falls away, it doesn't fall to the same level as the back. So that's why I chose this, but I've seen it done both ways. And this way, when it falls down, it's really at the same, pretty much the same level as the back of the album. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break, get everything taped up, wrapped, except for these sides, and then we'll apply all four of these panels to the base together. Okay, I'll be back real soon. Okay, I'm back and I've got all of our panels ready to go. So we've got the left, right. Oh, you know what I just realized? I might have to rethink this because this is actually gonna have the top on it. I might have needed to leave both of these open. Okay, anyways, we'll go ahead and attach these three. These are gonna be the sides that fall, apart, fall away when we open the album. And so I was kind of monkeying around with it, trying to figure out what to do. So. Here's what I'm thinking. So I want to place, it's gonna be hard to show this, but I'm gonna place the edge of this board, this edge, straight down, and then I'm gonna pull this flap up. And then that's gonna create a space between the two that'll just be a natural space um, that will accommodate um, the movement of these flaps. So again, I'm gonna open this flap. I'm gonna place this panel straight down on the on the cardstock, not on the chipboard, on the cardstock. And then I'm gonna roll this forward. And because I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra strip of tape here. And it's gonna be a little awkward, um, but I do think it's the best method. And um, when I was testing it out, it does look like um, because I was able to fold in these corners that none of the black is gonna be exposed so far. So I'm pretty happy with that. And if you're uncomfortable with this, um, you could add some glue here and that'll give you some time to wiggle things around. But I think I'm gonna be okay. So again, I'm gonna place this flat uh, in a 90 degree against the other chipboard, not on top of it, but on the side, which like I said, it's very hard to see it. I got my edge is turned out a little, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. Okay, done, done. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just holding this firmly in place. I think I need to do it this way so I can see the back end. Yeah, better, much better. Um, it do, it wants to raise up on top of the chipboard because the way I've turned the corners in. So beware of that. Hold it in place and then I'm gonna push this up. Okay, all right, now you can see there's a space here, okay? I think that's uh, gonna work out. So we're gonna do that. 
for the other side, I'll add another piece of tape. And I'm gonna add a little tape across the side too. So when I was doing the research to build this, looking at lots of different ideas and sort of different techniques, and one of the things that um, was interesting to me is so many of the projects that do this sort of explosion technique just use um, cardstock, which is a much easier process, but I don't I don't think it's very durable. So. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I am gonna, right after this project, I'm gonna do another box project um, where the spine is actually sitting down here and then all four sides um, open up, which I think is nice. Okay, so then we have one more piece that's gonna go here. And I'm gonna add some more tape. I just realized something. <clears throat> We're gonna have to, I just realized something. My edges, no they're not, Never mind. Never mind. I was starting to panic, I thought I forgot something, I didn't consider something, but I'm good. We're good, we're good. That's three out of four. Now, what I was telling you, this is where the hidden hinge is gonna be. So it's gonna go right here. And then attached to that is gonna be the lid to this. And I think I probably should have left this open uh, to attach the lid to it. So I think I'm gonna redo this piece and leave this part open so that the only parts that are wrapped are the top and bottom. So I'm gonna think about that for a minute. When I get back, I'll have that resolution and then I'll also have the pieces cut for the top. So one of the things to remember for the top is it has to go around this, which means all of the pieces for the top have to be slightly larger than the chipboard pieces for the bottom. And in the cut list, I'll, I'll specify the bottom pieces versus the lid piece, uh, just so you can tell the difference. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. and um. So we took a break because I was trying to rethink what I was doing here and I have decided to attach it just like we did the other side. And I'm gonna do something a little bit different with the lid. After I tested this, I came up with a new idea and you'll see that in a minute. So we're gonna, I'm gonna add some glue to give myself a little bit of time to maneuver this into its spot. And just like we did before, we are going to place this down on the side of this chipboard. It's not gonna be on top of it, so you want this to be resting on your surface. And then we are going to attach it to the back, okay? 
And I do think glue is a good idea. It just gives you a little bit of time to move it, to get it right where you want it. Um, the tape can be a little bit less forgiving. Okay, now I'm pushing it straight down against the cutting surface. And I'm gonna press it into place, and then when you when you let it fall down, you see you've got this natural space. Okay, so that's good. So now we've got all four sides that are gonna come up, so we can set this aside and start working on the lid. Okay. So here. Okay, everybody. I'm pulling the base back in, and we are going to go ahead and cover these hinge areas. And I've got tape on the back of these. And these are two inch strips and there's a score line down the center. You're gonna need two that are two by six and a half. They're gonna go on these sides. And two that are two by eight and a half. And they're gonna go on the long sides. So let's go ahead and get these in. I think I'll do the long sides first. And I've got plenty of tape down here. That's the wrong tool. So then we're pretty much done with this piece until we're ready to uh, attach the lid. But I wanna get these in because that'll um, also go a long way to sort of strengthening the uh, this as we're moving it around and decorating it. Okay, got fumble fingers. Um, I have a lot of muscle memory when it comes to making my um, mini albums. This is just <laughs> so different for me. I really got to think about what I'm doing. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-scored these. The score line is going to go um, right inside. So you can use that as sort of your guide to laying down your strip. I think I'm going to go the other way first since there's tape on both sides. Go this way first. And I'm just trying to make sure that it's Side to side, not gonna come out. But if it does, we're gonna manually trim anything that's sticking out on the sides. But I think we'll be okay. Okay, so that's in. And again, we'll take the tape backing off. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna lay this down like so, and I can see I've got a little bit hanging off the edge and I'm just gonna go in and manually trim that off, probably with um, not sure, I might use um, a straight edge. Okay, so that's in. It's a little bit stiff and that's fine because really we want it to lay flat when the book is open. Now you can score in here, but be very careful. It's very deep. You don't want to um, accidentally poke through your paper. And again, I'm using 65 pound Astro Bright. Okay, and we're gonna turn it around and do the other side. And then after I get them all in, if I need to trim edges, I'll go back and do that. Oop, that's a short one. Okay, we're making some progress today. I've had to build this a couple of times. I did a lot of research to come up with sort of different ways of doing this. Um, and there's, I'm gonna put a link in the bottom. There's this guy, his first name is Sage and he builds boxes. And he had some great techniques. I'm not gonna use all of them. Um, because I could tell he was wrapping his boxes with um, paper that's a lot lighter weight than what we're dealing with. And so some of the folding techniques that he was doing just won't happen with cardstock. Um, but I'm gonna get put, put a link down there. It was very interesting and very educational. Um, and definitely a slightly different approach to uh, covering boxes than what you see um, in the scrapbooking space. But it was, it was very educational. He had some pretty interesting tools to use too, to help him 
you know, with right angles and to make sure things were square. Okay, we want to lay this down flat, and I can see I, I'm off slightly again over here, but that's okay. <clears throat> we'll trim that manually. Now you'll notice I did not put any tape right there on the score line, and I think that allows it to go deeper into the crevice and it allows the paper to stretch a little more. So that was deliberate. <clears throat> okay, now we're ready to do the short sides. And the tape I used was 5 eighths and quarter inch and that worked out being just perfect. And there's nothing magic about this two inch. You could have done a one inch and scored it in half. Um, that's just what I decided to do because the rest of this was a one inch frame. So that was the reason I did that. Okay, last one. I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, I was talking to Julie. And um, we are starting to look at venues to have a retreat again. So I would like to hear some feedback from you guys. If I decided to do a class, would you guys be interested in uh, attending a retreat that actually had classes up until now? I mean, I'm always available to answer questions and I've actually um, helped people build albums at retreats. It's just not been a formal class. <clears throat> um, but if I did a formal class, would you guys be interested in taking a class at uh, one of our retreats? And if so, I wanna hear two things, yes uh, or no. Um, up until now, like I said, we've al always done like, um, basically they're crop, crop events. So this would be a formal class where we would um, build a project. And it would be most likely a mini album. And um, if you are interested, if that sounds interesting, it's going to be somewhere in San Diego. Um, what type of project would you be interested in doing? Um, would you want to do a mini album? And roughly what size would you be interested in doing? Um, any of the sizes that I've done to date would be fine. Um, anyways, just let me know in the comments below, or you can also dash an email uh, to contact at Scrap and Create, or go to our site and leave an email. Okay, so this is all looking pretty good. So I'm gonna burnish everything down, and then I'm gonna flip it over, and then just hand trim those edges, anything that's sticking out. And the reason I want to do that, one is for looks, and two is um, I don't want it to snag on anything. So those are the two reasons why I want to trim those off. So we're going to go at it from this direction. And then I'll use my um, knife to cut at a slight angle to trim those off. And of course, I'm in here without my cutter. So I'm going to stop here. You know what I'm doing. You may or may not have any to trim. So that's the last... Um, well, there's one more thing. We're gonna go ahead and cover this. So I've trimmed out a piece of paper and it just needs to cover it. Um, I can tell you what it is, but your your measurements may vary depending on where these flanges wound up. So this is basically eight and three eighths by six and three eighths, eight and three eighths by six and three eighths. And I'm just gonna cover this so that it's flat. Um, depending on how much paper I have at the end of the project, I may or may not put decorative paper on the back. So I definitely want to put the black down. Mm. 
<clears throat> just gonna center this. Whoops! Too much coffee. I hope I have enough to cover it, but I may not have. Okay, so this side's all done. Again, we'll come back in with our, our blade and trim off anything, any excess. And then this is pretty much done from a construction perspective. Um, the next thing we'll do is we will put decorative um, paper on um, these panels. So from a construction perspective, this is finished. 